<laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, thanks, but this is, this is some way to do it. So, uh, my presentation uh, this year is going to be Back to the Future, which is a review of what happened to me this year or, or the last 15 months. Um, I uh, basically, for, for the ones who don't know, I used to be an architect. Then I started being between architecture and building environmental design. Then I started getting interested in software development. And uh, then when I was at TT, it was something between software development and environmental design. And now I'm teaching at the University of Pennsylvania, which I'm doing uh, teaching and, and the software development part. So uh, what happened to my life was uh, in January uh, 2013, I, I posted this thing on Grasshopper, which I didn't know what is the the effect of that on my life, saying there is something called Ladybug, just a preview, it will come out. Uh, so many good things happened after that. Uh, the thing got like 59,000 downloads on uh, Grasshopper. We have like 2,800 downloads uh, on Dynamo. Uh, and then we got 25 different uh, contributors, which uh, most of them are some of the like <laughs> most talented people I have ever met in my life. I was lucky uh, to meet them online, work with them. Some of them I have never met in person yet, uh, but I will meet at some point. We got a great community, uh, more than uh, 15, uh, 1,500 discussions on the from, I mean, 5,000 replies. All this stuff is going on, and you know, like all this uh, uh, workshops all around the world, I don't know, like publications. They come around, and then you start seeing some uh, derivative, derivative work uh, from the from Ladybug and Honeybee, which was so great. For example, this one is the, is a PhD thesis, uh, which will be a plugin on top of Honeybee, which they told me like will be released soon. That a culture-based energy with an M, not energy. Google that. Uh, that that's, that's happening at uh, Case RPI. Uh, which was again uh, great to see. <clears throat> it was all great to see something like this, uh, which is again in a way is great, and it's great to have Byron here uh, today. That uh, some people start to take Ladybug and Honeybee, and then customize it, which 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 totally makes sense. And as an open source project, and the way we develop, I love to see it. And this one is uh, for Norman Foster office, uh, done by Byron. They put part of Ladybug and Honeybee that they use the most together and they called it Lady B, <laughs> that you can see there. And this is the Lady B, which is not Ladybug really, not Honeybee really, but something between the two that works for them. And okay, after here you look at this and you think, oh, this is great, this is something that you have done, uh, amazing, I'm very happy, until you double click on the, on the user object. This is what happens uh, under the hood. So, uh, what they want to do was like taking all the stuff and create their own, but the way we developed, uh, or I started developing, I take the responsibility, uh, Ladybug and Honeybee at the time was on top of the grasshopper geometry. And because of that, uh, you, you had always to copy paste the stuff. It was really hard to extend the code, it was really hard to reuse the code in a good way. And if you don't know what is the disaster here, every time that we up update Ladybug and Honeybee, this will break. And they have to go back and get it. I don't know how they take care of this stuff, but like to me it was, oh my god, this is a disaster. And then uh, things like this happened, which was even worse. Uh, people started saying like, oh, I have this thing in Dynamo, uh, but, but because we can't run it in Dynamo right now for Ladybug and Honeybee, I have to take it to Grasshopper, to right now, Grasshopper, this is the way you do it, this is the way you take it back. So you just read all these posts, and I mean, when I read it, I'm like, oh, this means like I didn't do my, my job well. So this person has to write something that this is a workaround, so put it here, put it there. Because we had all the library, right? But, but it couldn't work in Dynamo because it was so integrated to the Grasshopper. And then uh, this is a post on the Radiance group. Again, they said, yeah, like, is there a way to do it from Revit, export to Radiance? And I was just like, yes, but you know what? No, like takes time. And uh, that was that was the back to the future thing. So I had to go back to, to fix the future that I was I was creating and it wasn't going well. Um, and, and that was the, the last 15 months. So what, what, what happened uh, was, uh, you know, and, and the first thing was, okay, we just go use the code that we have. 
uh, ported it here and, and believe me, what you don't want to do is to go back and check the code that you wrote like two years ago. <laughs> And if you were like, if you, if, and if that was the time that you started learning to code, you don't want to do that. So I did it a couple of times. Like, oh my god, this is not my code. And then you check GitHub. There's a blank thing. Oh, this is actually my code. So at some point, like after a little bit of copy paste thing, was like, no, this is not going to work. And the thing was, okay, we started this new uh, what they call it on GitHub. I forgot group something. Uh, I'm, it's not a repository, but whatever it is. Uh, on GitHub, which called Ladybug Analysis Tools, and we started rewriting uh, the whole code. So uh, now we, uh, up to now, we have like plus more than 800 comments, and uh, we have five people involved in the development, uh, and uh, everything is redesigned to uh, work like this. Okay, it doesn't work. Uh, we, we have a core library, so we are rewriting the core library of the tools in, in pure Python, which is a wrapper for the analysis uh, engines that we have. And right now we are using the binaries, it's not like uh, we are really writing a Python wrapper on top of C++. But uh, then we have uh, another level on top of that, which we call plus. So if you have Ladybug, there's a Ladybug plus. If, if you have Honeybee, there's a Honeybee plus, and then Butterfly has a Butterfly plus. And the plus area is the part of the code that you can come and write your geometry libraries, which right now we have two, uh, one for Grasshopper and one for Dynamo. Uh, this one can be in any other language. Right now it's in Iron Python for both of them. And both of them are going to talk to the external application. There are a lot of good things about this, this structure, but the best part is if you go and rewrite this geometry library, which in the size is actually the same, so the geometry library right now for Honeybee is around like 100 lines of code that you have to change. So if you rewrite that 100 lines of code for your application, you will have a full plugin for your application. Basically, because we take care of the whole uh, core library, as far as you can provide and support this part, uh, then, then you can port the whole Ladybug and Honeybee to, to, your, to your new platform. These are some of the things that uh, have been done uh, during the last 15 years. So we did a test, like we, I mean Theo, I don't know if he made it here, he's just like one of the most amazing people I have ever met in my life. He's just so capable, so generous, like so supportive. And he started this ladybug on web, so we started uh, uh, looking at can we take some of the ladybug, basic ladybug functionalities, and, and for now just run it on the client side. This is a, a shadow range study, as you can see, and then like even having a sum path, so you can start talking to people, what does it mean, sum path, so you can uh, type the address there, it will get updates, uh, and, and in a way more, more of an educational tool at, at this point to, to be used. Uh, for real practice. But then, uh, because, because the library was there, as a proof of concept, uh, we released Ladybug for Dynamo, which was showing that this concept is going to work. You can have a small library for Dynamo, and, and the rest uh, will be working. We released this in January 2016. Uh, we have Honeybee on Dynamo Package Manager, but we never said that. Like, Happily that this is released and I tell you why so the package manager if you go there there is a honeybee it, it runs the daylighting stuff but we never said that to people so anyone who downloads it they just find it and download it I never really uh, publicly said that this thing is here I did like some presentations on it like this but we never posted it like on Facebook Twitter or something uh, to say this is this is ready for to go and download but you can see very similar stuff and again, uh, it, it works uh, using the same API, all the calls are the same, and then now, like this is a daylight thing for the nine points of the time that I just animated, uh, and I don't know if there's a way to automate this animation, but I did it one by one, the screen captures. Uh, so we have, uh, 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 as I said, there, there is a Python library that, that makes all these things work, and uh, this is, for example, the Honeybee one, there is an API documentation that gets generated from the code that we write, so uh, you, you can check this and, and create your own stuff like very fast. Basically this means uh, what I showed that Byron has done now is like 10 lines of code. And here's as an example that these are the lines that you need to write, I didn't count the number of the lines, but if you, run, if you write these lines and run it 
excuse me, in Python or, or, or Grasshopper right now, or, or uh, Dynamo, it should do this. It creates the room, it sets up the analysis, it runs the analysis, and it gives you the results. So uh, that, that's, the whole, that's the whole concept. The other thing is, uh, with the help, uh, a great help uh, from Sarit, who was here to teach the uh, daylighting workshop yesterday, we are checking this thing to make sure it's cross-platform and uh, runs both uh, fine uh, if you want to run it in uh, Linux or Windows. And again, like this is important, especially if it, when it comes to cloud computing and, and taking all this stuff and running it somewhere else. Um, again, one of the other things is if, if you are, uh, if you're willing to write some lines of code or if you want to create your own thing, uh, is uh, the, the plugin is cross-platform also between analysis platforms. So a model that you have should go to Energy Plus and should come from Energy Plus, should go to Radiance and come uh, from Radiance. I think like this is a, this is something that I'm trying very hard to, to, to make sure this will happen. Uh, instead of, oh, I'm writing another file for you, just go open this file somewhere else, oh, and you're missing these 10 things. So write another code to fix that, uh, which is the current uh, state of the art in the industry. And uh, one of the main advantages of rewriting this was uh, we had the chance to bring some of the newest uh, kind of uh, workflows out there and bring it uh, to, to this uh, plugin and kind of automate it, but what, what I call always a recipe, so we, we can write recipes to really easily uh, run some of the very advanced workflows. And this is the first time, the colors are much better here, but uh, this is the first time I look at that. But the thing that you see here is a, a three-phase daylight simulation, which uh, what it, it is, it, it breaks down the whole process of daylighting simulation that used to be one step to uh, one, step that they call it view matrix, then the transmittance matrix and, and the daylight matrix and it goes to the sky. Uh, what is, why this is exciting? This is exciting because it brings uh, very new unique opportunities. For instance, uh, this render in Radiance, if you run it in a normal way, the one that you see on the right takes like 36 minutes to run for the first time. And we had daylight coefficient based method before that would uh, and that would let you, for example, run, when you run an annual daylight analysis, you could go and reload the result for every hour or generate the result for every hour without running it for the grid-based analysis. But now you can do the same thing for the image-based analysis. So again, the first one for this one takes like a half an hour with this quality. This one takes six seconds or less. This one takes six seconds or less. So basically, once you have the base uh, one ran, then you can go and generate the ones like uh, quite fast. But this is the one that, as a designer for me, is even more exciting than the other one. Uh, the fact that in three-phase uh, daylight analysis, you can keep the sources of the light separate as window groups, and then you can go back and find the contribution from every source separately. What does it mean? It means when you have an image like this coming out of your daylighting analysis, and it's the same for the grid-based analysis. I'm just showing an image because it's easier to understand. This is actually is created from this image, which shows the contribution from the top part of the window, and this image, which is this part of the window, and this image, and this image. So 